today's graphic design tip of the day. For today's tip, we're going into Adobe Photoshop to learn how to add a label or logo to an actual real photo so it looks like the actual product that you're wanting to create. So as an example, I found two copyright free images from Pexels as well as Unsplash.com. One of them doesn't have a label, the other one has a label that we're going to have to remove just as an example of each way. So going into Adobe Photoshop or um, Photopea, if you don't have Photoshop, it's a free program that you'll be able to do the same process. You can see here on my one with a label, I already started to remove the top one. I'll be doing the second one in this video. And you can also see that I have a container that doesn't have the label. So starting with the one that we'll have to adjust, notice I made a copy of that layer by dragging it to the new layer button. And then using my patch tool, I'm going to zoom in using control plus as close as I can to the items on the label itself, circle around any text or information that's on it and drag it to a clean area to just clean up this label. Of course, everyone will be just a little bit different. Try to, if there's any shadows or highlights to pull these items to the same value so that you can uh, make sure that it doesn't add a weird little um, spot of highlight or shadow into the mix. Okay, now that I've removed all of the text from each of my labels, I can go ahead and start the process of adding my logo on. So I have it saved on my desktop of my computer. Of course, you can open it through the program as well. Just drag and drop it in, it's the easiest way. If you're in Photoshop, remember, um, don't hold down Shift. And if you're in Photo P, hold down the Shift key as you stretch your label out. If you're using more than one, you can also Control C, Control V to copy and paste it. And it's edit transform scale if you do need to stretch it bigger or smaller if it doesn't automatically give you that option. All right, um, so I have three labels on here now. I'm gonna start with the top one. If I go to edit down to transform and instead of scale this time, I'm gonna go to warp. Using the warp option, look at the shape the label is going on the product or packaging, whatever you're adding it to, and try to pull your lines to match up with that. This doesn't need too much, just a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing with each of these items. So edit, transform, warp. And again, follow the packaging. Look at the angle that it's going. Now this back one has a unique situation because it gets cut off here at the end. So I'm actually going to use my rectangle marquee tool and draw a line for a rectangle right on the edge of this first container. And as long as I'm on the layer with my last label, double check that it's the correct one, I can right click on that layer. And since I dragged it in, I need to rasterize it first. You can see the little icons here when you need to rasterize a layer before you can edit it and hit the delete key on my keyboard to remove just that part of the label. Nice and clean cut. Um, we can also add a shadow there to make it look a little bit more realistic. So when it comes to shadows, I'm gonna make a brand new layer on top of everything. And using my brush tool set to a softer opacity, maybe a little bit less than 80, I'm gonna go down to 45%, and a nice soft brush, uh, make sure it's set to black, Look at where your highlights and shadows already are in your picture. And it's going to look a little extreme at first, um, but we're going to go and blur it and take a little bit out. Just kind of add in where you see those shadows. If you go to filter, down to blur, and over to Gaussian blur, you'll be able to blur those out a bit. Still might not be completely realistic, and in that case, um, if you see the shadows going in places that you don't want, you can use your eraser, again, set to a low opacity, and just go back and take them away from anywhere that you don't see fit. So here's example one, again, a little bit extra um, information because you had to remove part of that label. The other one, we don't have to remove anything, it's just the surface. If you do need to crop it or change it, you're welcome to do it at this point, but I'm gonna brag or drag in this uh, label here and put it on top of the product. 
Again, if you're in Photoshop, don't hold Shift. If you're in Photo P, hold Shift as you stretched out. And then we're going to go through that same process of edit, transform, and over to warp. And pull it in the direction that the label is already going on your container. And I can make another layer above this then. And use my brush tool set to a low opacity. Look at where the shadows are already are on here. Add that in, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then I can go back with my eraser and remove it if I need to off of anywhere where it doesn't make sense. Now, what if you want to change the colors of the product? It might not be exactly what you had planned, especially with your logo. I don't know if this green matches with the pink and everything that's in this picture. So I'm going to go to my um, container picture, which is my background layer, and make a copy of it. And if you go up to image, down to adjustments, and over to hue and saturation, you can actually pull that hue and change it to be whatever color that you want. And I'm actually going to pull the saturation down just a bit too. Now I want to bring the ice cream color back to that orange because that flowed really well with my color harmony. In that case, I'm going to click on that layer that I just changed. You can see I still have two. And add a mask to it. So it's a little icon at the bottom of your layers palette um, that looks like a little camera. It's a square with a circle inside. And using my brush tool set to black instead of white because my mask is set to white, I can color on top of whatever I want to bring back from the layer below. So I need to make this a little bit smaller as I get closer to those edges. But as long as I'm up here, I can make it pretty big to just quickly go back over the ice cream to get that bright orange color back. And there we have a very custom ice cream container from an image that already existed. I hope you enjoyed today's graphic design tip of the day.